Hello dear subscribers. I hope you have a chance to stay away from football fever and spend a short time with your podcast. This is the news mini section for episode 47 July 2018. The Football World Cup is on and everything and everywhere discussion is about the matches and games. Even intelligent vehicles didn't stay behind and had something to say in these days. Russia introduced its electric autonomous bus in Kazan. The bus is manufactured by Kamaz and Nami, agricultural equipment company Kamaz PJSC, is Russia's largest truck maker. During this debut, the driverless car carried French and Australian fans 650 meters. The road was protected by fans from other humans and animals. At present, in the Russian Federation, there is no legal framework for traffic of driverless vehicles on general use roads. The first step towards implementing the concept would be to use similar transport in the territory of closed facilities. Kamaz 1221 shuttle stops at designated points and doors can be operated by passengers and it's also equipped with 5G router signal. General manager of Kamaz Sergei Kogogin mentions that Kamaz 1221 was just one of their unique driverless models. Somewhere else in Europe, in Switzerland, another company tried its electric driverless shuttles. On the street of Neuhausen Rainfall, you might come across the future of public transport. The bus charges overnight and operates throughout the day, transferring passengers to Rainfalls, the largest waterfall in Europe. On 27th March of this year, the CEO of Trapeze, Peter Schneck, and VBSH director Bruno Schwager attached a number plate to the 11-seat bus named Trapezio. This means the bus officially could travel between the normal traffic in the center of Neuhausen and Rainfall. On the test premises in this city, the development of services and solutions for covering tomorrow's mobility needs is being pushed. The leading forces at the Swiss Transit Lab are the global public transport system specialist Trapeze, its affiliated company Emotech and the Public Transport Authority of Schaffhausen VBSH. And they are all supported by the Office of Regional and Site Development of the Canton of Schaffhausen. Dominique Müller, Emotech Managing Director, explains. The Schaffhausen shuttle is the first self-driving bus in the world to be integrated in the operations control system of a public transport operator, through which it is monitored together with the regular vehicles of VBSH. A bit further in the United States, Boston approves self-driving cars to be tested citywide. From now on, autonomous driving company Nutonomy and its parent company Aptiv, formerly Delphi, are permitted to test their driverless cars on the city roads. They have been tested for more than a year on the seaport area. Active is running one more test in Las Vegas with Lyft. Cambridge-based Newtonomy has been testing its driverless cars in Singapore. They joined Active in 2017. Unfortunately, there was a fatal crash between an Uber Volvo and a pedestrian. The 300-page police report claims that the driver was looking down 3-4 seconds before the crash, means she was distracted and apparently by the popular program The Voice. It doesn't matter what and which program. The result is quite glum, and it shows that the awareness of driver still is a must in driving. On the other hand, Volvo, the car involved in the Uber accident, is promising to provide a real autonomous car of the XC90 SUV by 2020 and it will allow you to sleep, eat or even watch a blockbuster during commute to work. In Volvo's case, the car will be using map and laser technology so will be available in some major highways. All this controversial news lead to a question that whether the driverless cars would reduce the traffic or they will just add to the chaos. In the field of research, if everyone has some limitation, DARPA doesn't. 
the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency has been working on similar technologies. Their incredible systems can perform tasks that some other companies like Uber or Tesla wouldn't try. No traffic laws, no pedestrian safety. One of them, Okra, off-road crew augmentation developed by Carnegie Mellon University. The driver can drive the system with the help of pathfinding cues, also equipped with uh, obstacle avoidance system, can go autonomous off the beaten road. Rayton's RV uses LiDAR and cameras, and Honeywell has a windowless ATV with a 360-degree awareness. Well, that's all for news, and let's listen which book Haluk has reviewed for this week. This is the book review section for ITS podcast. Read by Dr. Haluk Aran, Fırat University, Elazığ, Turkey. The book title is Global Mobile Satellite Communications Applications for Maritime, Land and Aeronautical Applications and consists of 652 pages. Produced by Springer in 2018. Written by Stosh Dimev Ilchev. Global Mobile Satellite Communications Applications for Maritime, Land and Aeronautical Communication, Navigation and Surveillance play important role in sea, land and air transportation. Modern, innovative techniques and technology in GMSC are significant components for newly developed mobile broadband and multimedia communications and for IT, CNS and global navigation satellite systems. There are two volumes of this book, Applications and Theory. Both of them include GMSC trends, system concepts, and network architecture, supporting with technical information, characteristics, graphics, illustrations, and mathematics equations. It discusses GMSC for maritime, road and rail, and aeronautical applications. It mentions about connections between moving objects like ships, road and rail vehicles, and aircrafts, as well as ground telecommunications subscribers through the medium of communication satellites, ground earth stations, terrestrial telecommunication networks, internet service providers, and other wireless and landline telecommunications providers. The book presents new developments and initiatives for land and aeronautical applications and the introduction of new satellite constellations in non-geostationary orbits and projects of new hybrid satellite constellations. The volume 2 of this book, which refers to applications, consists of 7 chapters. Chapter 1 includes Inmarsat Geo GMSC system, addressing to the Inmarsat system, space segment, ground segment, and standards for maritime, land and aeronautical applications. It contains maritime, land and aeronautical system architecture and operations, as well as maritime and aeronautical emergency and safety service with special contribution on Global Aeronautical Distress and Safety System. Chapter 2 and 3 comprise non-GO-GMSC-related modern big-level systems, including Global Broadcasting Satellite System with implementation of new systems for maritime, land and aeronautical CNS. Chapter 4 and 5 encapsulate COSPAS SARSAT's GMSC system, covering distress and safety satellite systems, emergency satellite beacons for all mobile applications, as well as global mobile satellite distress system, introducing new concept of integrated commercial and safety satellite CNS for maritime, land and aeronautical applications. Chapter 6 contains global satellite augmentation systems, providing a retrospective of determination and navigation satellite systems, 
in integration with CNS and introduces existing and new projected regional satellite augmentation systems involving in European, Japanese, US, Russian, Chinese, Indian and African systems. The new projected ASAS network is vital for Africa and Middle East for improved safety and security and enhance the traffic control and management of ships, land vehicles and aircraft. Chapter 7 introduces stratospheric communication platforms with new wireless systems under development and will use constellations of stratospheric aircraft and airships equipped with transponders and large antenna systems to get more cost-effective CNS systems for ships, land vehicles and aircraft. This book represents telecommunications technique and technology, which can be useful for all technical staff on vessels at sea and rivers, on all types of land vehicles, on planes, on offshore constructions, and for everyone possessing satellite communication handset phones. Thank you for being with us. Don't forget to share and subscribe and check out our other media for other news. Dear listeners, if you are interested in helping or participating in our program, please let me know. You can join us as volunteers and have your share of podcast every time. This podcast is sponsored by IEEE Intelligent Transportation System Society. And this was Dr. Nayam Kavishkar from IEEE ITS Society.